Hi, I'm Ann Peters from the University of Southern California, and I'm here to talk about the new position statement for the treatment of type 1 diabetes across the lifespan. Now, this is actually a position statement that started a number of years ago, maybe five years ago, when I approached the American Diabetes Association about the possibility of writing separate guidelines for the management of type 1 diabetes. As we all know, type 1 and type 2 diabetes have certain commonalities, but in many ways they're different. And I wanted to really draw attention to how we should treat people with type 1 diabetes, what their specific needs are, and how we should approach them. The other very important point to me is that type 1 diabetes is not a pediatric disease. In fact, there are about 160,000 individuals with type 1 diabetes below the age of 18, and probably somewhere between 1 and 2 million adults with type 1 diabetes. Additionally, people with type 1 diabetes are now living long enough to become old. Before we had insulin, that obviously wasn't true, but now we're seeing lots of patients over the age of 65 who have type 1 diabetes and actually a whole set of needs that perhaps the middle-aged individual with type 1 diabetes doesn't have. So the first thing I had to do was write a book, and I got together with Dr. Lori LaFell, who's a pediatrician at Harvard, and together we wrote a book called the Type 1 Diabetes Source Book that basically used 60 academics who are involved in type 1 diabetes care to write an official guidebook to how to treat patients, and then from that, we drew sort of practical pearls and put that together into the new position statement. So we basically go through the management of people with type 1 diabetes from birth to death. Now, there's not a lot that's different except for that it puts all the type 1 diabetes information together in one place. But included in it is that patients with type 1 diabetes need to test their blood glucose levels a lot more often than the routine person with type 2 diabetes. So we say that patients may need 10 or more strips per day for testing their blood sugars, which is true, especially patients with hypoglycemia unawareness, they need to test often. We also talk about the need for continuous glucose monitoring, insulin pumps, insulin analogs, all the tools we need to treat our type 1 diabetic patients effectively. Another big change, though, and perhaps the biggest change of all, was that we changed the pediatric target for A1Cs. So it used to be that there were a variety of different targets depending on the age of the child. And we decided that based on current data, both the data that shows that higher A1Cs are in fact harmful to developing brains, and that the risk for hypoglycemia are less than we thought. So basically we said that the new target for all ages under the 18 is an A1C level of less than 7.5%. Ironically, of course, we then adjusted the A1Cs in the older population so that as you age, as you have more comorbidities and more severe hypoglycemia, we say that the A1C target should be loosened as people become very old. So we hope that this new position statement both helps everyone learn a little bit more about how to approach the patient with type 1 diabetes, as well as providing a resource as we try to get reimbursement for the tools and treatments our patients with type 1 diabetes need. Thank you.